So we're going to finish up chapter 2 with the last section on rational functions. Now, rational functions are... Rational is just a fancy word for fraction. So these functions are going to be one polynomial divided by another polynomial. And they are going to produce probably some of the weirdest graphs um, that you will see in a math class. And we're going to talk about at least some of these features um, now, but I'm going to introduce them all very briefly to you. So we've got a couple of interesting features, these kind of dashed lines. They aren't really part of this function in a, you know, in a sense. They're just there to help draw and help illustrate some of the properties of the functions. And these are called asymptotes. There are horizontal asymptotes, and there are, in this graph, two vertical asymptotes. And asymptote means to simply um, approach and get very, very close to, which is exactly what this function does. To each of the asymptotes, both vertical asymptotes and the one horizontal asymptote, the function will inevitably get infinitely close to these asymptotes. Um, and many times it will never touch the asymptotes. A rational function can cross or touch its horizontal asymptote, but a rational function will never ever touch one of its vertical asymptotes. We also have ideas of x and y intercepts as well. Since x and y intercepts are the easiest of these uh, features of this graph, that's what we're going to look at first. X and Y intercepts stay exactly the same as they have been in previous sections. To get the Y intercept of a rational function, just like for any other function, we're going to set X equal to zero and find Y. So we plug zero into the formula for the function. In this case, it's x squared, so this will be 0 squared, divided by x squared minus 9, which now will be 0 squared minus 9. So the y-intercept for this function will be 0 squared, which is 0, over 0 minus 9, 0 over minus 9, well anything over, excuse me, 0 over any non-zero number will just be 0. So the y-intercept will be the point that when x equals 0, y equals 0. It turns out this is also an x-intercept as well, because y, when y is 0, x is 0. But we'll see that right now. For the x-intercepts, you set y equal to 0, or f of x in our case, and solve for x. So we're going to set, you know, rather than f of x equals, it'll be 0 equals x squared over x squared minus 9. Now, if everything is reduced, then all we end up having to do is multiply both sides by the denominator in this case. So that's, in this case, x squared minus 9. And multiplying by the denominator is going to have the effect of getting rid of the fraction. So it's going to make this equation nicer to work with. Because on the right, the denominator will cancel with itself, and we get x squared on the right, and on the left, well, zero times anything is just zero. 
So if x squared is 0, taking square roots of both sides, we get plus or minus the square root of 0 equals x. Well, that means that 0 equals x, because square root of 0 is 0, and positive and negative 0 are both just 0. So our only x-intercept is the point 0 when x is 0, y is 0. So 0, comma, 0. But this is common enough that so long as the formula for the function is reduced, the effect of finding the x-intercept for rational functions is just simply to set the numerator equal to zero and solve. Because if everything's reduced, then our first step will always be to multiply by the denominator, whatever it happens to be. It will always cancel out here, so we won't have the denominator anymore in, in the next line. We'll only have the numerator. And on the left, whatever the denominator was times zero is just zero. So the first step is to just get the denominator out of the equation, to rewrite the equation as the numerator equals zero. So that's kind of a shortcut with uh, rational functions and determining the x their x-intercepts. And we'll see in the next video that the denominator, setting the denominator equal to zero, gives us the vertical asymptotes.